during the existence of the Black Panther Party in the late 60s and the early 70s, 73% of all the newspaper articles written about the Black Panther Party was written by the FBI. I just discovered this fact that was in a book that was written by a professor of history named Curtis Austin. He wrote a book in 2008 and it's titled Up Against the Wall, Violence in the Making and Unmaking of the Black Panther Party, who by the way was uh, detained by the police when this book came out when he was flying through an airport. Um, and they flagged him as a felon, even though he never committed a felony. And uh, this author gave a TED talk, a TEDx talk, I think, uh, which I'll leave in the description below. And he goes over the many, many basic ideas of the Black Panther Party, from which I have been studying a lot lately because I draw a lot of inspiration from the Black Panther Party. Oh, man. And in towards the end, he says that through his research, which he's been studying the Black Panther Party and its history for over 25 years, um, that he said that he learned that 73 percent of all newspaper articles written about the Black Panther Party during that time was written by the FBI. And we know that the FBI was targeting not only the Black Panther Party, but black people in general through their famous infamous COINTELPRO, which stands for Counterintelligence Program. I made a video about how the public became aware of COINTELPRO. Basically, a lot of peace activists, white peace activists, um, broke into an FBI office in the state of Pennsylvania in a town called Media. It's a weird name for a town. Um, and stole over a thousand, of over a thousand documents and in these documents, they kept seeing the word COINTELPRO, and they didn't know what that word was, but then they figured out that it stood for counterintelligence program, and it was this secret program by the FBI and other intelligence agencies and law enforcement agencies um, throughout the country who were targeting black people. And we should know that uh, COINTELPRO really does still exist in this country. Um, there was a leaked document by the FBI that came out a few years ago that came up with the term black identity extremists, people who identify as black, people who call for black lives matter. If you can see that, right? Um, they are now black identity extremists and they're being targeted, monitored, surveilled by the FBI and other government state agencies. But think about that number, 73%. Oh my goodness. So say you know, this guy, Curtis Austin, is a historian. He wrote a book about it. He's been studying it for decades. And um, a lot of this stuff will come from looking up old newspaper articles, right? Newspaper was like a big thing in the 60s and 70s. It still is, but we, you know, they didn't have the internet. Um, and he came to know that it was either written by the FBI or it was written by someone that was being recruited by the FBI or had some association with the FBI, right? We should know that the government does this stuff all the time. The TED Talk is really amazing. He goes over a lot, over a lot of the basics of the Black Panther Party, which is a historical organization that I think every leftist should learn and study closely. I believe they were the most advanced leftist party uh, in the history of the United States. And we should draw a lot of inspiration and learn from their both mistakes and failures, right? 73% is a shocking number of how far the FBI and other state institutions will go to really demonize an organization that was essentially calling for equality in society, for a more equal world. Um, the Black Panther Party was not racist. They were not some type of crazy authoritarian regime. In fact, in the book of Curtis Jackson and in the TED Talk, he mentions that the majority of Black Panther members were women, right? But in the newspapers, it's these angry black men who want to kill white people. Um, that's not as, I mean, it started because the Black Panthers in Oakland, California in 1966 
wanted to end police brutality, but then it expanded and included a lot of other um, issues that they wanted to tackle, therefore creating the, the famous 10-point program from the Black Panther Party that called for basic things like housing, freedom, not to be drafted in the Vietnam War, uh, for food, for job opportunities, full employment for black folks in the U.S., right? Very typical basic things that I think black folks should, and really all fo poor folks should be um, organizing for. And um, the book also goes in a lot of the assassinations in the TED Talk. He specifically talks about the assassination of Fred Hampton. Um, just a crazy, it's crazy. The FBI really planned and orchestrated this whole event. They built uh, a blueprint, uh, an, an actual structure of Fred Hampton's apartment that they practiced for months um, from going in and busting down the doors and how they're going to uh, kill people, basically. And they and that and this really happened because they hired um, an informant that was an infiltrator in the Black Panther Party and that knew what Fred Hampton's apartment looked like. And this guy was in trouble for some other charge and they offered him basically freedom and exemption of that and a pardon of that charge if he was going to help the FBI do that. And he so he did. He betrayed, I think his name is William O'Neill. Um, and there's an excellent documentary by PBS that's on YouTube called Vanguard of the Revolution, the Black Panther Party. Uh, despite being made and produced by PBS, it was a really good documentary, especially for starters. It doesn't really go into the class aspect, but it also doesn't portray the Black Panther Party as some evil racist uh, organization or anything like that. But just think about the, the how far, like, okay, this is what the FBI was doing and other state institutions was doing in the late 60s and early 70s. What are they doing now with all this online information? Uh, to the masses, you know, people watching this, you all watching this probably, you know, you're a little bit more woke than most folks, right? You're learning, you know about this channel, right? The majority of people don't even know what the peace report is or what it stands for. Um, and that doesn't mean they're stupid, but it, it, it means that, you know, they're struggling, they don't have time to do things. And then they're more susceptible and more gullible to the mass media information complex, that we're all really susceptible to, right? We grew up with a lot of these American values. Um, but yeah, how the FBI wrote 73% of the newspaper articles in the 60s and 70s about the Black Panther Party just shows the extent of which these state institutions will go to repress people from organizing for a more equal society, li essentially lifting the consciousness of the masses, uniting them. And that's exactly what Fred Hampton did, right? Fred Hampton is is famous for how he united people of all races as, and ethnicities to fight for the same cause. And that is like the potentially the most dangerous thing that both the state and the ruling class do not want right now. Um, and they had, to, they had to take him out. It's a logical, rational decision from the perspective of the state and the ruling class. They do not want this type of consciousness to hit the, pe hit the masses. They want the masses to argue with each other over sex, over... Um, gender over race ethnicity whatever and keep us all divided because we are the majority right and if we come together it would be fairly easy if we all came together but even in most revolutionary uh, situations in the past it hasn't been all the people coming together you have all these elements in society we're trying to organize uh, for or against or whatever right but yeah i will link this video in the description below i think you should watch it it's not that long um, do some more research on if you're in the U.S. Learn more about these revolutionary organizations in the U.S. from the past. And more importantly, get involved with new revolutionary organizations that exist today. I really appreciate the new African Black Panther Party, the NABPP. It's new African Black Panther Party. And I know it's confusing. There's like the, the old Black Panther Party. There's the new Black Panther Party. And then there's the new African Black Panther Party. I would consider the new African Black Panther Party the most revolutionary of all of them. Um, and really is applying uh, the correct analysis and theory to the conditions of the world that we live in today. And the country that we live in today. They're mainly based out of New Jersey. 
but you can check them out on I think their Facebook is their is their main outlet but they do have a, a website um, under uh, Kevin Rashid Johnson's name. Kevin Rashid Johnson is one of the co-founders of the New African Black Panther Party. Who This organization was founded in prison by political prisoners, um, which they call schools of liberation. They call the prison system a school of liberation because so many people have gone to prison and studied books, and that's where they met Marx, Lenin, Mao, and other revolutionaries. Um, and so one of them, Chaka Zulu, has gotten out of prison. Now he's like really building this organization up. So socialism is about who you are as a human being. And uh, if you are afraid of socialism, then you are afraid of yourself. All power to the people. Kevin Rashid Johnson is still in prison, but still writing articles. So much good uh, reading content on that website. And I'll link that in the description below. But yeah. Listen to the TED Talk, get the book, uh, Curtis Austin is his name, check out the new African Black Panther Party, learn about the old Black Panther Party, um, and yeah, I hope you start talking about this number, how the FBI wrote 73% of the newspaper articles about the Black Panther Party. It's crazy.